remember that they're changing my voice. Okay, so I went over the Kyle thing. All right, so now let's talk about what goes down here. So also there was an incident before I get into this. I stood up for Northerners and Jenna when a weed dealer uh, who was on the south part of San Jose, who lived in those apartments at the time, had said that he was in jail. And he said, quote unquote, fuck a, you know, he used the term for the Northerners at the time. And I was like, yeah, you can't be saying that. I'm like, you know, don't say that. He's exactly like, I don't give a fuck about this. And he said he don't give a fuck about, you know, Crips and this, this. I'm, I'm like, look, you're, you're a fucking idiot, right? I didn't say you called him an idiot because I was trying to be on good terms. But I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm trying to correct him. Like, look, I'm thinking you're an idiot. Okay? You know, you can't just go around saying that stuff and you're not a gang member. Like, you know, you're, you're going to get fucking killed or beat down, right? You know, if that gets out, that you think that way and you think you're bad, you know, yeah, it, it was fucking retard. Some, some people are dumb. But anyway, let's get to this here. Um, and that was before people, it was common for people to go to the Cannabis Club. So the first thing that happens... So there was some sort of a staged event or tech-assisted event on the road and my friend, uh, who's a blood affiliate, was in his girlfriend's bands. And I and and basically he had, um, they had got cut off from the road and he pulls over, or they pull over like what? And he pulls over or whatever. For whatever reason, they both pulled over and he hops out the car and he squabbles with one of these guys. And as the story goes, he slipped. And that's, that part is contested. They said he actually hit him with a good one and he fell. Okay. And and so what either way, I mean, what the hell it happens, right? You know, so um he call he starts following these dudes. Now again, you know my partner isn't, you know, that much of a crime, so I'm just gonna go ahead and speak on it, right? It's really not a big deal. He they call my my, my one of uh one of my uh members of my crew that I established, right? You know, calls one of the Crips, right? That is a close friend of mine. And he tells me, you know, again, this guy didn't quite see himself as a gang member at the time, but we agreed to call it the Crip thing as a story for another day. And he definitely doesn't see himself, and he was a very, very, very dependable person. We don't hang out with each other anymore because I'm targeted, and I didn't want to bring him hardship when I don't feel that he's that religious of a person, right? Even though he has a certain religious background in his family, and I didn't want to, you know, bring heat on him. I didn't reach out to him. Right. But, you know, so we, we get in his truck. Right. And we, we, we um, put uh, a big bar and a hockey stick in the trunk and we you know, or in, the, in the truck bed and we drive toward um, toward the incident. There, he's still falling around this guy the whole time. And then they pull into the park. They decide that they're going to pull into the park and face. Now, this is part of what doesn't make sense. Right. If there's four of them fuck are they driving away from him for that's part of what makes me say it was a tech assisted event or a staged event because i have no reason to believe that all these people weren't gang stalkers including the blood affiliate i have no reason to believe that okay in fact the evidence these days shows that they, they are and they were so we get there like 15 minutes later or something like that right you know they're at the park and they're just starting to stop their vehicle okay and so, yeah, so what was he doing? He doesn't have a gun or a knife or anything, right? He's just following them around, right? And so we pull up, and as we pull up, they start exiting their vehicle like, okay, they want to see us about some. I guess they, they, had, they had called those two guys that would come later. We'll get to that. That's probably why they were there. So there's like four of them, and one of them is like this small, skinny white guy. He gets out, and he's like, okay, I guess, you know, we're going to fight now or something. He says something like that. And then, boom, the hockey stick and the crowbar comes out. So my friend, he's like a smaller guy. He picks up this huge, like, metal bar. It's not a crowbar. It's a big metal bar. And I pick up the hockey stick. And that guy says, oh, I guess not, and goes back into the vehicle, right? And they take off. And, you know, while they're taking off, you know, I'm talking shit or whatever. And they take off. Then those two dudes come up later, right? Okay. So two dudes come to, and they're two Hispanic dudes. They come to back them up. So they're like white and Hispanic crew, right? It was eventually we called a, uh, well, I'm not going to name the crew, but you know. And the, the two guys who came, they didn't flee. So we still got the crowbar, hockey stick, but it's back in the trunk bed now. For whatever reason, we stayed there, 
even though, you know, there was people in the park and I'm pulling out a hockey stick, like fucking, you know, it, you know, and yeah, remember Jason Voorhees has a hockey stick before you think it's not going to help. It, it would help make a long, especially wielded by me. Yeah. It would have tore his ass up, you know? So those guys come and eventually we, you know, we just say, Hey, you know, we think that you're brave and that you got heart for showing up or whatever, something like this. And we just smoke weed with them and fucking that, that, that squash that. Okay, that's the incident number one, right? So we're starting to get back at the streets, and that 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 occurred. I don't. These aren't these aren't in chronological order. I don't think, right? They're they're not. But you know, I have like eight or ten incidents here um, about how I started facing these people, right? And there was a song at the time, I believe, called by Far Side, called "Can't Keep Running Away," right? So, and also in the Shaka Zulu movie, it said, "Sooner or later, we must fight back." So there's a lot of things that are kind of reinforcing um the logic of of facing these people so point number two one of those guys he was a white guy who fought uh my friend right you know uh he was caught slipping by a shopping center by what used to be burger king there on um tenant and uh, monterey and he was wearing some kind of sterling silver chain or something and so my friend gets in his face, whoop de whoop, and he, this guy, he's, he's scared, right? And he says, give me, you know, your chain, you know, what have you. So the guy takes off his chain, hands it to him. He's like, look, I don't want any problems. He's scared, right? And I'm there like a little ways away. I'm not pressing him. He's doing all the pressing, right? Because he wanted to get even with him or something. And so he gives him back his chain, right? Right away. He said, I don't want this chain. And he gives him back. He's just trying to like exert power over him or something, right? And then this this randomly this huge like southern looking white guy, huge guy, he pulls up and he starts yelling, "Hey, da da da!" Across the street, and I'm talking shit to him, woo woo, and that dude just drives away. You know, I was eager to like put hands on him for some reason, and you know, because I saw him as a racist white guy, I was mad that two black guys were hassling a white guy. I'm like, look, I don't give a fuck if you're, you know, the, the toughest clansman around or something. I'm, you know, fuck all that shit. You know, I don't care what this is about, and you don't know what this is about. But I can see why you think that, you know, that guy looks more square. We look like G's or something. I can see wh what he thinks, right? Okay, so that was that. Um, point number three. A crew member and I are in the infinity. He is younger than I am. And a small northerner and two others come up. And an older relative of theirs is in the background. He had gone shopping. Was, this is uh, by the gas station on um, on Monterey and Dunn. There's still a gas station there. There used to be um, a shopping, like a Lucky's or some kind of shopping uh, grocery store there. Okay, and, and it's, now there's a Ross there. Okay, and there's some kind of, there's a liquor store there and so on and so forth. Okay, so, yeah, so this guy runs up to the window, right? Um, I make a quick plan with the, the younger uh, member of my crew, right? So the, the, for all intents and purposes, we're two crips in the car with our own gang, you know, that's not part of the major crypt network but backs them up and store for another day and you know in terms of there's a gangster car there's neighborhood there's block crypts there's you know what have you there's underground and okay that's story for another day so i make a quick plan and we pop out i have i whip out a box cutter he comes out with a cigarette on his mouth i say look we're gonna play this like geez we're gonna give him a chance to make a decision here i want you to put this cigarette in your mouth and be like man what's going on homie kind of in a way that's smooth right so we're gonna put on like a little show here but i'm gonna be ready to kill somebody and I'm going to whip out the box cutter. If they say okay and play it off, then we're going to, you know, we're going to go that way with it, right? However they want to do it. If they want to start taking off on me, I'm going to kill them. Okay, so we pop out on them. Boom. Okay. They are bitter, but they don't want to die. This would later vindicate my machete move. We'll get to that. This was by the gas station. Okay, I went over that already, but, you know, okay. So that occurs. So the dude who popped up first, they were saying, oh, he don't want to fight him one on one. This guy's like, you know. This guy's like 5'2", 120 pounds. I'm 6'4", at the time, like 170 pounds. I would have beat the socks out of him. He would, at no point in that thing did he want to see me about shit. Don't get that part twisted. And I was 19 then. So, I'd, I, you know, I'd been in a car accident at 17 that I went over before a couple of videos ago or something. But I was still, like, I, I, I would have won, right? Okay. So, point number four. A knife standoff occurs when with with a person who looks like Shallow Hal. It is me and another Crip, and he basically had done us dirty on uh, uh on a on a weed deal. And so, so he decides to reimburse us 
um, instead of, you know, getting stabbed up and beat down by, you know, he has a knife too, right? And his knife is out. Well, my knife is out. Okay. I'm like, look, you're going to lose this. I promise you that. And he's like, how do you know? How do you know? And he's like, okay, fuck it. What can I, what can I, and he, he makes some kind of excuse and, and, and gives, and give us, you know, he reimburses us on the spot. Okay. Now that kind of overkill, why the other robbery, you know, the, the other time when, um, I got jacked for weed that it, it's not worth doing that. It was, you know, the way that went down was awkward and weird. And I'm thinking, you know, yeah, you know, I, if I, Hopefully I would have, you know, stopped smoking weed, but I was so heartbroken all the time. Weed was like my medicine. I listened to love songs. I transcend. If women had not treated me unfairly, these incidents wouldn't be happening because I would have quit smoking weed. I would have been saving my money. I would have gotten married by 18. I would have got, done the things I needed to do um, to settle down. But by them controlling reproduction and running psyops on me, it pushed me right toward gangs. And they also, you know, what created gangs was psychological operations and government operations in the first place. There's a reason why they wear red and blue and the Klan wears white, right? Red, white, and blue. And there's so many connections, right? Navy blue for Crips, right? Navy blue belt, Serenio's Crips, Navy, Navy blue. There's so many connections, old English tattoos, a gang set, you know, whites, is white set scrambled. Man, I can go on and on. It comes from the, the governing class. And the governing class uses psychology and coercion and so on to get them to be gang members. And quite often they don't put that together from what I gather, but I don't know what every gang member, uh, what every gang member story there is. For all I know, they're all in fucking cults and I wasn't, I don't know. Okay. There was certainly something funny going on the whole time. I'll tell you that. Okay. Point number five, I spot the Norteno who was smaller from before at the pizza place. You know, there used to be a straw hats pizza or something over there in the shopping center on, uh, it's a, um, it's not it's across the street from where we've seen the white guy. It's this shopping center where there's now a, a McDonald's. There's a Sushi Nera. There's Eric's Deli. There's some kind of um, some kind of store there. You know, I forgot what it's called. And there's some other small stores there or something, right? Okay. So I spot this, this well, he's a northerner, right? He hasn't been to the pin. I spot this northerner, right, from the Norte gang, right, who was smaller from before at the pizza place with two older Nortenos and his bike is outside. My machete is in the infinity. Okay. Feeling comfortable that the two older guys will have his back. Okay. So basically we go into the store, right? I wrote it wrong here. So I'm just going to tell it without reading it. Okay. So we went into the, the Straw Hats pizza or whatever pizza place it was. He's sitting down there with, um, with the two older, uh, northerners right so they're probably eh, probably 25 they're, they're in their 20s um at that point i was 19 the other dude was uh, the other guy with me was like 17 or something and you know there's some awkward moment inside the store okay and because he's like mocking me the little guy's mocking me or something i'm in the store he's like oh he's acting like it's not a big deal like he's comfortable right he's feeling comfortable with the two older guys have his back so he eventually comes out by himself. Again, he's trying to make the argument that why don't you just fight him toe to toe? But now again, that that wasn't the problem, right? He always had people with him, and he knew they're going to help him. So he's kind of and he go he comes out mocking the idea of a gangster. So he makes a gun with his fingers. This is ironic as hell, because he hung out in a place where there was that truck on uh, Barnell, okay, where they retrieved the truck and they did the shooting in front of the Safeway. So he was friends with some guy who would eventually shoot a Southerner in front of the around the Safeway area on Tenant. Okay? He was friends with that guy. And he's he's mocking the idea of, okay, I caught you slipping and here's my gun. I guess he was mad because I caught him slipping after he had run up in the car the other in the other incident. And he was he was in that kind of some kind of bitter mocker, but mostly like a funny clown mocker way about him where he's making a a a, a gun sign with three fingers, right? And so while he's there, you know, I, I spit on his bike, what have you. He didn't want to take off of me and he didn't want to initiate fighting. At this point, I'm feeling like, man, I'm so, I'm, I'm bitter. So I point to the two northerners in the store, which one can argue is a mistake, but I think they're going to help him anyway. I don't think they're going to sit there while he gets jumped and not come out. So I'm like, man, you guys may as well come out here. So I point to him and, I, and they look at each other and then they, boom, they come out. Okay. So then, okay, let's, let's read it from the thing here. Okay. I tell the crew member to retrieve the machete that's in the trunk. 
though I know that that would have made him an accessory. He starts arguing with them. And I say, I'll hold them off, then hand it to me, and I'll finish them off. Okay, he doesn't do it. He declines, and this is part of what causes these people to start leaving the crew because they saw that I was with the business and they, they, the other people in my group, they wanted to live their lives, right? They, you know, they'd shoot somebody if they came to their house or something. They, you know, they didn't think that these, these things were worth fighting over, where I had a more um, specific martial code, right? So it's a martial arts uh, issue and it's a gang issue, right? And it's an issue of, you know, social class. There's other things that factor in. There's racial implications, what have you. Okay, so he doesn't want to do it, and I don't want to turn my back on him, on these people. There's, there's three of them, right? So we all end up agreeing to all just walk away. Okay, and you know, that was, to some degree, it was regrettable, but I did my part. I'm like, look, I'm ready to kill these people right now. You see what I'm saying? Give me that machete. You know, if they don't run, they're dead. Okay, same, same deal as before, right? If you run and fucking you give me my respect and stop treating me like a bitch, start robbing me for a little petty shit and gossiping like a bitch behind my back. Again, I'm not trying to insult them. I'm just saying how I felt at the time, okay? Then boom. And if you, you squash it later on and say, okay, then boom, then we're good. We're golden, okay? Now you know I'm not a bitch. But make no mistake, as a martial artist, as a great warrior, as a, as a certain type of martial artist, not a pacifist, mind you, not a monk or something, not some kind of person who, th who just does techniques and say, no, that's not what it's about, but actually a great warrior martial arts, the top martial arts ever possible. I'm not going out like a fucking bitch over an issue that has to do with being a man. And I still stand by my decision still, okay? Because it's a matter of principle, you feel me? And no disrespect to um, the Northerners, Norte, what have you. I, you know, we, we've had memories together. Shout out to the people who are my friends from Morgan Hill, San Jose, San Francisco. Big shout out to San Francisco. Look, I ain't got no no problem with them other than the problem a righteous person should have. But I had to, I had to handle my business. Okay, and again, I'm not promoting a gang-related lifestyle here. You shouldn't be a gang member. And I'm not just saying that you should not join a gang. You should rally and obey God through me and push the war on poverty plan and, and live a morally precise life, focus, moral intensity, and universal pinpoint and moral precision. But with the information I had then, especially, it wasn't a, a bad move at, in the least. And it was wise on the, on the other part of the spectrum. Okay. So point number five, and again, I'm telling the truth about this and so on and so forth, right? I'm not putting extras on it, what have you. Uh, we're, we're for, but no, that was point number five. Point number six. A child molester is dealt with and no one's hurt as I don't like violence. And I know that the police were on to me and the city seemed to be against me. So as these incidents unfold, right, I'm having various gang-related incidents. And it's a small town. I'm feeling like, look, this has gotten out there. Cops are watching me. Okay, they, you know, this, I can't, I can't, this can't carry on. Okay. And so at some point, someone who I was acquainted with it turns out this person told me a story about how they molested a little girl. And, and, and I had agreed with that person not to tell anyone that story, but it started really weighing heavily on me. And what, he described it as he wasn't feeling himself. I think they hit him with technology, so he'd molest a little girl. I think they choose people who are somewhat random, and they hit him with that technology. And then they mix them in with the gangs and the streets in a way that causes a certain dynamic to occur, a certain series of events to unfold. Okay. So I had dealt with that, and I'm not going to get too much into detail about that. Point number seven. A member of another crew that is aligned to Norte, according to them, left his backpack in my vehicle. Now, I'm confused about the timeline. I know I was 19 at this point, but I don't know how this occurred relative to the other things, right? Okay. I think that you know, I because because the, the guy who I saw at the pizza place and by the gas station, what have you, he wasn't officially from the crew over there. We'll call it on Barnell. We'll just say where it is. I'm, you know, it's in the news anyway, kind of thing. So, in terms of when that Serenia was shot, right? So, um, again, so that that guy left his backpack in the vehicle. So. It was me and a blood affiliate and that guy and someone else. I don't remember who the other person was, okay? Um, and we had gone to go drinking or something, right? We were hanging out. Like, we were, I want to say we were friends, but we were acquaintances. We hung out. I mean, you might call it that we were friends. That's part of what's sad about all this. Like, some of these guys were basically my friends. They weren't like my best friend of all in the, all the world, but we had such a, 
such a respectable relationship. They show me so much love that we were friends, basically. I don't know how else to describe it. And so, you know, no one hates the idea of racial war more than I do kind of thing because of that, right? But, but at the same time, I'm a tribal warfare person. It's in my blood. But I'm not looking for trouble and so on and so forth. Anyway, where are we here? Um, okay, so the backpack thing. Okay. I had the presence of mind to make sure that there was a blood affiliate with me and a crew member and the two of us, okay, I don't know if the crew member was there. I don't remember who the the third the, the, the third of the four people were there. But for whatever reason, that dude was there. And he was fucked in the head. And people knew that he was fucked in the head. I knew a, a northerner who got into a scrap with him in that in Barnell. And he, as the story goes, he had him in a headlock for half an hour. This guy's screaming. And like, he's got issues, right? He's like mentally ill or something sad, you know. But for whatever reason, he, you know, he's also hyper-aggressive in certain ways. He's not a huge guy or something, but he's aggressive. And it causes problems. You see what I'm saying? And again, I don't, I don't respect mental health. They tend to take advantage of people. If big pharma's a problem, they misdiagnose people. They overprescribe. There's off-label marketing. There's all kinds of those kickbacks. There's all kinds of problems there. But that, that is, this is part of the story. Okay. So we had, we had a meeting because he had asked for it back in a way that was disrespectful. Like, give me my fucking backpack back. We're like, what the hell? Next time I'm there, I'm going to give you. No, no, you give it to me now kind of thing. You see what I'm saying? So, um... You know, we said we we call it a little meeting, right? A little powwow, whatever you want to call it. And we said, well, what should we do about this? Okay, is you no know, we we deal with these guys to some degree, da 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 da. You know, we have we you know we go to San Jose a lot, but we also go through Morgan Hill once in a while. Might get score a sack there real fast, so we don't have to go all the way to the west side or the east side or whatever. Okay, so we're like, you know, now you see how I feel. I say this is what I've been talking about where. There's these issues with these guys, and they're not super tough or something. What do I do about it? Some of these guys are from San Jose, and they're OGs and da-da-da, but they're not really hanging out with those guys. They're, those guys are more local guys, right? And so, um, you know, there are a lot of issues coming to play here, right? The issues of being a man, issues of being a G, what have you. And we decided that we would give it back in a way that is disrespectful to make a long story short. Okay. Well, I also forgot to say, well, did I bring up that time? Okay, I was by, I guess it was five times. I was with Kyle. I was with that blood affiliate guy right around the corner from his house. Some some guys from Thug Life, you know, I was trying to, you know, make peace with them, hang out with them, smoke weed with them. I gave him 60 bucks. I shouldn't have done that. I don't know. I, was thinking, I guess I was looking for weed and I wanted to resolve it. And I'm like, man, if this works out, I took that gamble. I lost in the gamble, right? So they took off. This guy comes back out of his house instead. He's messing with something in his pocket. And he's looked nervous because he knows I'm with two people. I guess he told him that he was going to stab me real quick and, and go back. And he got nervous. This was before the incident at the liquor store. And I say, look, this guy's not going to interfere. This is between you and me. I like reassure him. I think that stayed with him when, when I saw him at the liquor store. He's like, look, this guy's cool, right? He could have jumped me right there with his homie right there. And again, this guy, the blood affiliate, his cousin does not get along with seven trees. They were like bitter rivals, bitter rivals, you know, and, and, you know, he had his issues with him. He's a big OG, da, 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 right? So there was a lot of things that could cause a lot of problems to make a long story short. Okay. So, you know, basically, ah, boy, I, I feel like I should tell you how, how it went down. Okay, make a long story short. We, we did, we, 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 we gave him back the, the backpack in a way that was very disrespectful and disturbing. Okay, that, that's all I'll speak on that. And, you know, not only had he made an issue, some two, like, uh, two people from his crew had come up to my car at one point when I'm by myself. And I'm like, where's his back? And I had to drive off. So I forgot that part. That's part's key. Because then we're like, okay, look, this guy had done this and he had done that, right? He set the stage for that. Maybe he told them that there was drugs and there was nothing in there. Maybe he told them that there was drugs in there because they were, like, serious. But I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So now I'm like, okay, well, what do we do here? And this guy had later told me in a different situation that I should bust on motherfuckers. And Randell, who was supposedly Kyle's friend, had told me that I should, he, he said, quote unquote, I want you to, quote unquote, off that nigga, right? To shoot him. So several people during the course of this had told me to shoot motherfuckers. Now, not in terms of the, Nor uh, the, the Nortenos allies in Morgan Hill. Nobody there told me to shoot any of those guys. But over incidents with the Somalians, he said, just bust on those guys, right? And over the Kyle incident, you know, a Crip had told me, a Crip affiliate, and said, you know, kill that nigga, and that everything was going to be hunky-dory, right? To give me bad advice. 
So I had shown restraint. I didn't say, okay, you're right, guys. Well, here I go. I'm fucking retarded. So you got to make, you got to, you know, pick your battles. Okay. So at that point, you know, it's me getting back at society. So they, 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 they had kind of said, okay, he didn't make an issue of it after that. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. There's a reason why he didn't. He, I guess he didn't have a chance. We'll get to that. Point number eight. So there's the botched robbery that occurs, right? Basically, a weed dealer, I'm not going to tell you who he is and where he lives, what have you, even though I'm not, I don't respect gang codes and gang rules and street rules. I'm a, I'm a holy person, and I might talk a certain way when I describe it, but I do not think of myself as a gangster or thug or even bad at all. This is just the story. And as they're hitting me with technology and fumes and poisons, it might be told a certain way, but I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying to sound like a gangster telling a story. Okay. So, and I'm not a gangster, again. So, we basically, we go to this place and I buy an eighth of weed. I'm sure there's San Martin Sheriff Department, or excuse me, Santa Clara County Sheriff Department. There's substations in San Martin that they would love to hear this part, right? But they're not super anxious, right? Okay. That, you know, we go there and I buy an eighth of weed. Now we have like, only a few dollars on us we like there's like no money besides that we're all we're three brokers it's, it's me the blood affiliate and this guy who was actually in the car we eventually make friends i see that dude in the car who was in the car at the park when we you know had the hockey stick okay i see that dude walking by barnell i roll up on him ask him where the weed is boom we become pretty close friends at the time okay we're basically well i go as far as we're friends i see him today i'm like hey what's up you know we're friends we just haven't seen each other in like fucking decades or something, but we were, you know, like over 20 years. And so, you know, um, I, I start hanging out with him. I start getting weed from him. I'm trying to expand my weed network. I was big, big on the weed, big on the weed. It's how I dealt with the broken heart. It's how I dealt with being in the middle of nowhere, miserable, and, and all the all the problems in life being different. When I, You know, how I, I play love songs, play gangster songs, I'd be in my zone, you know. And that's part of what caused me to go to reform school. It's a huge part of it. So I'm with him and the blood affiliate. There's three of us. And, and, and the weed dealer had marked the two dudes. There's two dudes, two white dudes who had bought an ounce or an ounce or more from, from the guy. And so as they left, he said, hey, fuck those fools. I hate those fools. You, you guys, he, they just bought an ounce. You guys should rob them. Okay, if that guy never run his fucking mouth, that would have never unfolded. And, you know, when you look at it, it's, it, it, it strongly implicates people of Northern Euro European descent. I'll say that. English, German, whatever. That story implicates them as having a huge part in the gangsta. I'm a story for another day. Anyway, so he marks them. We follow these guys. And we're like, I hope they pull over so we have a chance to kind of approach them in a public place. Lo and behold, they pull over by the Safeway. By the Safeway and by the bank. Okay, I say, look. We're going to do this. We're going to do this right. And I, and I emphasize, this, this This should piss you off. I emphasize, say, look, you know, you go there and ask, say you want to buy weed. And when they pull out the big ass sack, you say, let me see that. Oh, and you try to be their friend and shit. Then you snatch that shit, run back, and we take off. You see what I'm saying? What could the fuck could go wrong, right? And I emphasize, say, look, if you can't do that, at least tell them, them to, you know, ask them for like a, a quarter or something. Have it in your hand and act like you're checking it out and just take off. And if you can't do that, just fucking abort. If you cannot do that, under no circumstances should this turn into a public fucking spectacle. You should abort. Now, again, I'm not, this guy's actually older than I am, okay? I'm not his dad, his older brother, da da da. He didn't have to do what I say. Man, we agreed together. In fact, but what's also interesting is he had hesitated at first. This is also sad, right? He was like, look, why should we do this? We got some weed already. Without He's like trying to make excuses, right, for not doing it. And at some point, he's like, fuck it, I'm going to do this. Yeah, fuck it. And his ego kicks in, right? So there's a part of him that's like, it's a bad idea. What well, fuck am I going to get in trouble for? Da, da, da. There's another part of him that's like, man, fuck that. I'm a G, da, 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 da. My cousins are bloods, da, 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 da. Boom. Okay, so he goes over there. And um, they're in a, they're in a uh, SUV. And we don't see what goes on. He kind of explains it later or something. Okay, he explains it when he gets back to the car. For whatever reason, they're talking for a while. I'm like, man, this is taking too long. I told him, just grab that shit. Like, this is nerve wracking shit. Just grab that shit. Let's get the fuck out of here. You see what I'm saying? And then, again, I'm not a criminal. I'm not a criminal. 
I have been jacked on the streets and shit like that, and hate begets hate and shit. And I was a younger person. I was 19, you know, brokenhearted. Still, you know, I'm still brokenhearted over Maria Mello, what have you. So don't get that part twisted. I do not approve of robbery. So, unless you're taken back in a certain way where it makes sense, in a scenario that where it actually makes sense. That scenario is close to that, but it's not close enough. That's for sure. So, um, basically, what ends up happening is, all of a sudden, blows start. They, you know, they start going to blows. I'm like, what the fuck? What part of the plan is this? They start throwing blows at each other. And at first, I guess he hit him with an initial blow because while he's sitting down, he just starts taking off on him, right? And then I'm like, what the? How does he? How does he hit you? And then they start. They start driving away, like they start going back and forth, like getting ready to pull out, right? And as as he goes back one time. The white guy who's like in the passenger seat, I guess it is, right? Or he's in the back seat. For whatever reason, he's on the left side, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. I guess he made his way to the back seat or something. I can't remember why that is. Because you think that the the driver's, the wheel's on the, oh, the wheel's on the left side. So how is he on the left side? For whatever reason, this guy, why it, it goes backwards. I guess he got in the back seat. It's the only way it makes sense. Because his hand, he leans out the window. And, and punches him a good one in the jaw. Okay? And I'm like, man, what the fucking hell? He runs back. I'm like, oh, I already see where they're going with this. That we got to get some get back again. Man, this sucks. And this is the only time we're trying to get even with uh, uh, white people led to some kind of problem. And so the government is running this. They're white racist people, right? White Jew LGBT. Okay? So they drive away. We start following them. I'm following a fucking SUV in an in infinity. At some point um, on Watsonville Road or some, he stops in the middle of the road, and then he reverses. I'm like, what's he stopping? What are you doing? I'm you know, he's stopping. Why is he doing the middle of the road? Why doesn't he pull over? And then he fucking ram he rams the front of my vehicle, and then they keep going. Now I'm like, look, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna beat the socks out of these motherfuckers now. Okay, you see, I'm saying that's an expensive fix. So. The hood's like bent up, da-da-da, we fall. They go to the San Martin substation. You cannot make this shit up. You can't. These motherfuckers with an ounce in their car, they're probably gang stalkers or something, they go to the San Martin Sheriff substation. You, you hear me right now? I mean, fucking retard. Back then, it was a more serious crime than it is now. Back then, you can have an ounce. No one gives a shit. If you, you know, it's legal, it's legal. And at a point where they wouldn't even probably check if you have a card or not. Quite often. Motherfucker goes there. He comes out. The white guy who socked him comes out with a paper. and says, y'all got me fucked up. I just came here to pay my ticket. I'm like, what the? F You're going to act like this shit isn't going down. And that you just came here to pay your ticket. So they, he goes inside. We go. I go like, hey, you know, now, now that we're here. Hey, you hit my car. You know, time to, time to you know. The police there start acting like complete white racist, unhelpful bitches. Okay, to make a long story short, they're they're not going to take a report. Call the police. Then you should have called the police there. You know, you're not supposed to follow a hit and run driver. Man, fuck all that shit. So, they go they go out like, I guess they parked or something. I guess while we we're in there, they reparked or or some or or the guy dropped him off and he parked a little ways away. So we go park by their vehicle. You can't make this shit. I don't know what the fuck we were thinking in that point. I don't know. But for whatever reason, we walk up on them three deep. One of them uh, has, has his keys. I guess he's the driver between his, uh, his fingers. He has like a big, long key. And this, this is, is strange too. Um, the younger guy who was with me, who was, you know, who, who was not the blood affiliate, the other guy, Okay, he knows the guy who socked him in the jaw, just like he knew the white guy. He was with the white guy who squabbled with the blood affiliate when he was in his bends, and, and that incident occurred where it ended up in the park with the hockey stick. He knew the white guy there. This is small town, right? He knew him, and he says that guy's afraid of me. Let me say something to him before we go. We approach him, and he walks up a little closer to him and says, "Is it going to be a problem?" That guy starts acting scared. You cannot make this shit up. It's a little guy. They said they beat them up at a party before or something. That the guy who socked the blood affiliate, okay, um, he had beat up that guy at a party. You can't make this shit up. So he approached him, and that guy starts acting scared. And then that, that one guy with the key, he says, you know, 
that he doesn't want to have to, you know, because we were like, why are you using the key? You're going to escalate. He's, I don't want to have to, but you got to put yourself in my shoes and da da da. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, when the white people are being confronted, okay, they knew there was something going on. Now, there's like a police officer, because this is a sheriff's substation. There's, there's a sheriff's deputy who takes note and they call in reinforcements. So now, at some point, like four or five, I think there's five of them, they're like, they're in formation and they're approaching with their hands by their guns and they say, we don't know what's going on here. Everyone put your hands up. So we put our hands up, you know, and before that, I guess I had, I had put the weed in somewhere smart or something. Okay. Or, or I, I, they, they took their eyes off me for a second and I, and I stashed it. Right. Cause I still had the eighth and they search us. And while they're searching us, guess what they find in this SUV? They find an ounce of marijuana. Motherfucker gets, he doesn't get a ticket. He gets handcuffed and put in the back of the police car. I used to make a mistake on this part. I used to, I used to remember it as the blood affiliate was the only one who, who gets hand put in the back of the police car. But that guy did too. I forgot about that, right? Okay. So then we're sitting there for a hell of a long time, like fucking two hours, some ridiculous amount of time. Some police officer comes up, some pretty boy white uh, highway patrol. I guess they're, you know, he was collaborating. He said, what's going on here? And he said, you know, it was, it was an armed robbery. He gives some code for armed robbery or something, right? And he goes, oh, really? Like it was like the most eventful thing out there, right? What had happened, you cannot make this shit up, by the way. What had happened is they said that he pulled a gun on them. That was the first thing they said, because that white guy who was uh, the one who didn't have the key, who, you know, the, the other guy with me who wasn't the blood affiliate knew and said his friend beat him up at a party. He had said to the blood affiliate that he's a vice lord from Chicago. Why is he's in ego mode? He's like, fuck it, I got this. I'm a G or I'm, I'm you know, his, you know, his family's bloods. He hangs out with bloods. He's, 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 he's in thick with the bloods back then. Like he's not a gang member. You know, he, he's a guy means well, but he's, you know, he, that's his mentality. And so he had said, I'm a vice lord. So he said, okay, that he's a GD and he told him to break himself while he pretend to have a gun. Now, what the fuck part of that was not part of the plan. Ladies and gentlemen, was that part of the plan? No, that was not part of the plan. That was fucking stupid. That's when they that's when they socked him. They say they got scared and they socked him. That's when that that the punches start being flown, thrown. And so, you know, he gets a he, he gets put in the back of the police car. And so, we did not agree on like a story when the police came, okay? Because there was like no need to agree on a story. You know, this is the type of thing that everyone gets cut loose for, except for if you find an ounce on somebody. So what ended up happening was the police officer said, you know, all you have to do is say there's no money and we can let everyone go home. And he said, everyone. He didn't say, you know, the blood affiliate is coming with us. I probably would have thought it through. You see what I'm saying? And I said, you know, okay. As far as I understand, because he checked my wallet, you know, he checked everyone's pockets and wallets. They checked for the money specifically. For whatever reason, they thought the money was of the utmost fucking importance because he said he was trying to buy an eight from those guys and that um, and that they tried to jack him or something like that. And that started the melee, which led up to us following him, you know, and we followed him because they rammed into the car or something like that, right? And so, you know, basically what had happened at that point was I said... Yes, there's no money. Cause what the fuck am I? What would you say? You say, yeah, it's here somewhere, guys. You just stay there for two more hours and they don't find it. Look, motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? So I said, yeah, there's no money. I don't know what happened there because I was in the car, but there's no fucking money. I sure as hell didn't say, hey, guys, our plan was to fucking rob them. I'm the, I'm the getaway driver. I did, I did not say that shit. I'll tell you that. So he's in the back of the vehicle. And, you know... Um, he, he, he's looking at me hard and he starts talking shit to me. So he's talking shit to blood affiliate and I'm talking shit to him. I'm like, man, what, what the fuck? I'm like, what the fuck? You, what are you talking shit to me? Don't let fuck you. You see what I'm saying? So after that day on, he started telling people that I quote unquote snitched on him. 
We eventually sort that out in the future and dot da da. It's a long story for another day, right? And he was actually dating my first uh, girlfriend, okay, at the time. So her brother's a lawyer, and he he calls, um, you know, they call me and so on and say no, no, no. They at some point they want me to go to the police station and tell them that I found the money in the car. One of the problems is that my parents caught wind of what was going on. Like his 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 mom called my parents because they knew my parents, right? His his mother, the blood affiliate, and she told them what had happened basically, and that that they want me. And she, play, you know, she didn't know whether there was money or not, but she said if she wants, you know, me and their son to go to the police station and tell them that he found the money. Because he was telling her that he found the money or, or that I found the money or something. There was no money, right? And my parents were like, no, under no circumstances are you going to do that because you'll get in trouble. So I started getting confused. And when push came to shove because her mom eventually argued with my parents about it, I eventually said, you know, I'm going to side with my parents on this one. And I didn't go to the police station to tell them uh, that, you know, and it didn't matter because it, it was a matter of bringing credence to his story. He eventually takes some kind of plea deal and he did another, uh, he did a robbery on his own with another dude. Okay. Where they, they, they were at a park and this dude's from the West side, right? And they, you know, they were feeding for weed or whatever. And there's these old ladies where they had their purses on the table and he, he says they're going to, you know, they wanted to snatch it and run away. So he runs in first, snatches the purse. They didn't even see him. The other dude comes in after him, snatches the purse. They see him. And so he snatched the purse. He ran into the bushes and hid for whatever reason. I guess that was his plan to hide the whole time. Wait till it blows over and come out later. Not the worst plan, but certainly nerve wracking and, and dirty and, and stressful. Right. And so he sees the other guy come across. Uh, and the other guy happened to be dating, you know, his girlfriend, who's my ex-girlfriend's best friend, some white girl from, you know, Santa Cruz somewhere, you know, Scotts Valley or something. He sees this guy walking in front of the bushes with this old lady grabbing his fucking wrist. You can't make this. And this, this, this connects to another story later. OK. And. Um, basically, he comes out the bushes and says, what's going on? Why are you grabbing my friend? He's trying to help him out. Police come, they both get wrapped up. You can't make this shit up. So he's got to fight both those cases like at the same time. And so he eventually goes to Elmwood or whatever. Now, after that, in my 20s later on, we're on, you know, he used to live on East San Jose, right? By Tully, uh, by Story and McLaughlin area, greater area, right? So there's like a, a some kind of stop and save or some kind of grocery store there by the 7-Eleven. And so we you know we're 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 four four young black men, him and a different cousin who's not a gang member who's from like another state, and it was me, and one of uh, the members of my crew. Okay, so there's four four of us and we're black. We're all black, and we're on the east side, and we decide to go into the fucking store across the street from his house. I don't know what the fuck. Sometimes it's like what was what, anyone thinking, right? And to uh, take a bottle. We see his fucking mother there and she sees us in the store and she's like, what are you trying to prove? Before she, she doesn't know what's going on, but she sees him the way he's acting or something and says, what are you trying to prove? And he's like, nothing. We're just in the store or whatever. I'm like, man, this is a, this is a fucking, this abort. Let's get the fuck. I'm feeling like that. Right. I guess he takes a bottle and his cousin takes a bottle and, and me and the other dude. We're like, we go to the car, like we're, we run distraction, right? So they see four black guys in the store, say they're going to keep an eye on all four of them. The idea is they take the bottle, boom, they take off. Yeah, we pick them up, whatever, you know, the store's not going to make too big of a deal. We get away with it. So what happens is just like with the incident at the park, he gets away clean, you know? He like runs, uh, he runs to the right, well, no, excuse me, he doesn't get away clean. They 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 run out and the the staff is falling, but he he gets away. He runs to the right and and towards some like apartments or some some street over there, whatever's over there, and he he loses them, right? But his cousin decides to cut straight across the street. So he gets halfway across the street. There's traffic. Dude comes out there, grabs him by the fucking wrist. You can't make this up. You can't. What the fuck, right? Takes him back and he calls he calls his mother. 
and uh and 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 they get in trouble whoop de whoop now his mother hates my guts oh my mother doesn't like me she hates my guts after that kind of thing and so um yeah what happened according to the guy was that he didn't he didn't know the east side from somewhere else and he didn't you know he didn't know what to do he he felt like he was going to be lost on the east side with some kind of stolen goods and he's he felt nervous so he he just gave up i'm like you can't make this shit up you feel me? What the fuck? Anyway, so let's let's wrap up um, this thing here. Okay. You know, we'll just save for another video. I'm still tripping off of the stories right here, you know. You can't make this up, though. Okay. <laughs> what What was going on, right? What were people thinking, you know? I mean, when you're heartbroken and you're bored and you're... When you're a young black man trying to live your life, I, you know, I could I could try to explain a lot of ways. It's been like 24 years, you know. Actually, at that time, it was later on because I had um, gotten in an accident with the Infinity, you know, where it wasn't that bad, but it had problems. It, it, it was having trouble reversing. Or I had switched from the green because my dad had a white Infinity and I had the green Infinity. So, you know, the green Infinity eventually kicks the dust or something. Or I don't remember what happened to it. Eventually it breaks down or something. It's too expensive to fix. They get rid of it. And my dad gets a new vehicle. He got like a, a Toyota Camry or something, even though he's a brain surgeon because of all the financial sabotage. And so I'm driving the old white Infinity Q45. And the, the um, for whatever reason, I don't know what causes it. I think the mechanics were saying they didn't know how to refix it too. That the reverse, it wasn't going into reverse. Okay. And one, some, one might say, well, it's just transmission. I don't know. For whatever reason, they thought that, you know, maybe my mom had said that it, it's a transmission fix and it's expensive. I don't know. But... I was driving around with no fucking reverse for a time with, with Rahel, okay, after we had gotten evicted from the apartments over there in Ohlone, Chinua. Okay, and after that, I eventually lose that car. I, I go through a fence. You know, the car blows a tire. I go through a fence. I was faded. I, I have um, have somebody who saw it happen pull over. I say, just take me to town. Boom. I go to town. I come back to the scene, okay. And I said, you know, I, was, I didn't have any service on my phone, so I went to town for having service. And then I started drinking when I got to town because even though I went to town and back, I was still reeking of alcohol. And he said, good answer. And he was an angry big white cop. Yep. Yes, sir. That's, that's what I had went down. So we're going to get more into some of the, um, the stories in the next video. Okay. Um, you know, no, no, no. I'm almost done with this. Let's just wrap up these things. Okay. So point number nine. Okay, so point number eight was discussed was about the robbery gone bad. Point number seven was um, uh, the the backpack, and I, I and I had added the robbery to my notes later to this paper later, which I printed out, and I forgot to say that that backpack incident would lead to the final incident where victory was achieved. So now there's kind of you know it's kind of like breaking even but at some point i've come out ahead and again is it important to come out ahead not necessarily i proved my point okay there's a machete there's the hockey stick there's the you know box cutter i mean i'm i'm, I'm confronting motherfuckers you see what i'm saying so it's stupid to say oh guys oh no you know i'd put it down but point number nine i can't really tell you about it because there's a significant gap between how i put it down you know to kind of end the end all Okay, and again, you know, um, I can say that nobody that I identified as a northerner or as a Nortenio gang member was involved, but they must have heard it and, and must have respected it. Okay. But before that, let's go into over point number nine, actually, is something else. Let's go over something else. Point number 10 is the end. All. Okay, so point number nine, I had driven solo, I had driven by solo. And exchanged gang signs with an older Norteño from the west side. I was in my car with a crew member uh, later on. And that west side Norteño was with his sister. He is 40 or so. And I'm like 19. Uh, he, he, he comes up to the car. And he says, remember me? What was that about? Or whatever. He says something to that effect, right? He says something to me. And he says, don't look at each other while he's trying to lecture me, right? And I'm thinking, you know, he's by himself, right? And I'm I'm just honestly thinking, what do we do? You know, I'm supposed to just sit here and listen to you? What, what you know? And so I look, and I guess he cites that as why he, he did what he did. So I look at my uh, the crew member, and I look back at him, 
and right when I turn my head back, he busts me into the lip. He he like grabs the the um, the door the door top right by the you know where the window goes up, and he kind of used that to launch himself forward and punch me in the lip with it with a pretty good one. It busts my lip right. It doesn't push back my tooth or anything, but just busts my lip. And then he jumps into the back of his vehicle. And later on, he said that you know he respected me as a Crip gang member, okay, and he thought that I had a gun. Though no one said anything about a gun or anything. So he jumped back. He's like, I think this guy's going to look at this guy. And the gun's going to come out. So he dies. I'm thinking he dive back to get his gun. So we had a who's got a gun moment. And we take off. Because his sister was like not right there at the time. Like he was with his sister, but she went to the store or something. So later on, that's who car the car he was in. They go back to a Barnell. We, um, you know, we drive and we park on Barnell. And we got two Sobe bottles. And my plan was, you know, we're going to squab with anyone who comes out. I'm going to break a bottle on somebody's head. You should do the same. If you can't break a bottle on the ground and back them up with it, okay, and I'll handle the rest. So I'm a straight killer. At that, at that point, I've taken Kung Fu, Taekwondo. I developed my own style. I would, there, no one could beat me. Okay, I was, gonna, you know, I was ready to kill 4, 10, 20 people. It didn't matter. I was going to cut, you know, stab them to death, right, with the broken pieces of glass. Okay. And so... His sister comes out, right? She drives by. She's a nice lady, very friendly, very, very considerate. She's like a good Christian woman or something, right? And so she says, I'm sorry that happened to you, dude. I said, look, we just want to talk to him. Bring him out here, da-da-da. She's okay. She never gets him. I'm glad she never gets him, right? Shout out to her, what have you. Okay. Um, and basically, a, a police officer ends up coming on, on a fluke right after she leaves or something. And so I played off masterfully. We took off. There's not much more to that story. Okay. So now the 10th point. I guess it's the 10th point now. Because I have the points a little out of order here. Because I added the one about the botched robbery after the after I printed it out. So the 10th point. On my own, I masterfully take on people in what is the biggest act of revenge yet. Keep in mind... Um, keep in mind God said vengeance is his... And like David versus Goliath, I am God's son, right? The root and offspring of David. So I have a right to take vengeance on people as I see fit because it's in the spirit of God. And I had the highest cause. And part of that entailed uh, securing my position as a warrior. And of course, you know, there's other incidents that had occurred after this where northerners were on my side. I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so when all was said and done, I had one with no bloodshed. And I didn't keep score, mind you. They knew I was victorious in principle. I go on to graduate college later on in life and to be the top martial artist ever with my top martial arts uh, challenge and the most targeted person in human history in a sense. Okay, so to make a long story short, when I said blood affiliate, the word I was looking for was associate. And they have changed the sound of my voice to make it so I sound weird um, in this video because the rich white Jew and LGBT governing class tends to make fun of black people and they try to make fun of the people who seem more ghetto more and so token minorities help them.